In this episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, we are going to start a new project to create this annual plan template in Google Sheets. And over the next couple of videos, I am going to show you how to create this from scratch. So stick around and let's get after it. Okay, so here we are and we are starting with a blank template and we are going to start to create our annual plan template. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to remind you that if you are finding any value in these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. If you could share this video on social media, I would be very grateful. And for those of you who don't want to wait for the end of the series and just want to purchase this template, I am going to put a link down in the description below along with a discount code to save yourself a little bit of money if you would like to purchase this Google Sheets template and get to work with it right away. So without further ado, let's start to create this template. So whenever I'm starting to create an annual plan template, the first thing that I'm going to do is set all of my cell sizes. So I'm just going to start to do that now because I know exactly how I want this set up. And what I like to do is just have a thin layer of cells on the outsides of my templates to just give a little bit of buffer in the print area. So the way that I usually do this is I'll take the first column here of A and I'm just going to right click and resize this to size 10. And then I'm going to take the first row and the same thing I'm going to resize this right click and I'm going to do this to size 10 as well. And I just like to have this column and row on the top sides or the sorry around the outside of my templates. Now I'm going to go ahead and size a lot of these columns because I already know what the finished project is going to look like. But in, if you were creating something from scratch, you could start to create the cells and then size it as you go to fit the data that you want to put it in or that you want to put in it. So what I'm going to do is I know that I want B, column B, I'm going to want that to be 50. And I know that I want C to be 100. So I'm going to resize those right now. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I know that I want D basically to the end. So in this case, Z, I want this to be 30. So you can see how this sheet starts to shrink, but I actually need to go from D all the way to BD. So I'm just going to right click, highlight all these columns, right click, and insert some columns to the right. And then I'll insert a bunch more columns um, to the right until we get all the way to BD. And that's where we want to be. And then I'll just put a, um, another 10 column on the outside and I'll delete these ones. So this is going to set up the frame of our actual annual plan template. So just to reiterate, we have the first row is going to be 10. The first column is 10. Then B is 50. C is 100 and then D all the way through BD is 30, and then BE at the end here is 10. Now, if you remember from the intro video, the first thing that we want to put in there is actually a spot where we can put in our team logo. So I'm just going to highlight three cells here. I'm going to take B2 all the way over to E4, and I am just going to merge those. And I'll just write in there team logo here, and I'll just put that in the middle because that is going to be where I'm going to put my team logo. Now I'm going to put some other information up top. One of the things that I like to put in my templates um, is the team name and the starting date of the template and then the SNC coach name. So I'll put in team name, starting date, and SNC coach. And then from L all the way over to S, I'm just going to merge and center some cells there where I can put those values into. But you could set these up to be whatever you'd like. I'm going to copy these one more time and I'm going to go over to U and paste those in. But in this case, what I want to put in those cells is maybe the head coach name, um, assistant coach, And I like to have the therapist name as well. And this could be your AT or your physio. And then finally, one of the last things I like to put on my templates is um, from 
AI all the way to AL. I'm just gonna merge some more cells here and then merge them right down to the end. And this is just something that I'll put in there for my own kind of interest, but I'll put basically the top three goals for the team that I wanna try and get accomplished. So maybe I'll put in goal number one, goal number two, and goal number three. And, whoops, this has, this should say goal number two. And that just keeps me centered when I am starting to create my annual plan of what are the top three things that this team needs to work on in terms of the physical qualities and how am I gonna kinda go about that. So then from there, I'm just gonna put some borders around these cells to signify that we're gonna put data in there. So I'm gonna highlight all of these and all of these merge cells here. And I'll go to the borders tool and I'm gonna use the all borders and I'm gonna select sort of a dotted line. And I think that looks pretty good. Around the team logo, I'll go back to the borders tool. And this time I'm gonna select sort of a thick border. So that's gonna be the top part of our template. Now the next part, if you remember, is we actually had a bar going across that had our periodization sort of title on it. So between all of my sections on this annual plan template, what I'll do is I'll actually put um, a row that is only 10. And it just gives me enough space to sort of separate out a lot of those um, sections. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll just go all the way across and I'm going to merge and center those. And then I know I'm gonna put another section in underneath there. So I'm gonna resize again, 10. And in this case, I want eight cells down. So I'm gonna go from basically nine all the way to 16. And I'm going to put a border kind of around there just to signify that a box is gonna go there and I'll put a border around here as well. So these are gonna be where my sections go. So the first thing we're gonna work on is actually the dates. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to merge all of these here on the left-hand side here. So I'm just merging those across and after I've merged a couple, I should be able to just drag them down and you can see it just changed the formatting a little bit, but I'm still able to do that. And I'll just put the border back. And what I want to do here is I want to be able to select a starting date and then have all of the dates basically populate this area. So how we're going to do that is when we go back up to our starting date, I want to be able to put a date in here. And Google Sheets has a neat function where you can actually double click on a cell and enter a date as long as it is formatted as such. So I'm gonna take this cell here where the starting date goes. I'm going to go to um, data, data validation, and where it asks me my criteria, if I select date here and then hit save, it knows that this is going to be a date cell. And if I double click in this cell, it's gonna give me this calendar. When I'm doing my periodization schemes, I'll basically pick the first Sunday of the year as my starting date. So I'm gonna put that in there now and I'll center this. And so that is gonna be our starting date. Now down here, we're going to reference that. So let me just put in my days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So those are gonna be my days of the week. And then along the top, I'm gonna have the months. And what I'm gonna need to do here is I'm going to basically reference this cell. So in this first one on the Sunday, we know that this is gonna be our Sunday value, so I'm going to type equals, and then this date here. And you can see that that date went in there, but it's trying to put in the whole date. So it's trying to put in the whole 2021-01-03. Um, but I only want the day. So I can reformat this as a different um, style by se selecting this cell, and I'll go to format, and then go to number, if I scroll all the way down to custom number format, I have the option to actually enter in my own number format. So in this case, I want DD because I only care about the date. And you can see here, it's giving me a sample of 18. So when I hit apply, you can see now it's just giving me the day number. So I'm gonna drag this down just so that it puts the format all the way across. But we don't want this one to be equal to L4 
we actually want it to be equal to the Sunday plus one day. So what I'll do is underneath the Monday, I'll just type equals this day right here and then plus one. And then I can drag this down and you can see now we get all of our dates. We got 03, 04, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if I were to take the one beside it and go equals this day plus seven, so we get our next Sunday and then I can hit clear our autofill again and let's just center these and I should be able to now drag these all the way across. So as I drag these across, what you'll see is all of our days. Whoops, I just need to drag this one across. There we go. So what you'll see is all of our days and you can see now that we have all of the days in there um, because what we're doing is off of this first date here, which I'll color, we're referencing add one all the way down this way and then add seven to each of these. So it's basically taking the one beside it, adding seven and so on and so forth. And then we just drag that across. Now, if you remember from the intro video again, we had the month along the top. So what I'm gonna do is something very similar. I'll just reference the first cell here. And you can see now it's put the day in there, but we don't want the day, we want the month. So let's change the number format one more time. We'll go to format and then number and go to custom number format. In this case, instead of DD, we want MMM for three letters from the month. And when I hit apply, you can see it gives me January. But if I was to drag this across, you see we got basically five weeks of January because this Sunday was in January. Then we have February, March, April, May, all the way kind of across. And that looks pretty good to me. And I'm just gonna put the border back now. So then one of the last things that we're going to do today, after I center all of these, is I wanna now color these based on the month. So what I can do here is I'm going to highlight all of these cells and I'm going to go to format, conditional formatting. And what I'm gonna use is under format cells, if we're gonna go right down to use a custom formula. And we're basically gonna pick a formula that checks to see whether the month is odd or whether the month is even. So if you can imagine, we'll have one month that's odd, then the next month is even, then odd, then even, then odd, then even, and we're gonna color them accordingly. So what I'm gonna type here is equals is odd, and then open that up, and we wanna check the month, so I'm gonna type in month, and then open that up, and the, the cell that we wanna check is going to be um, D9, because that is where the date lives, and then I'll close that off, and you can see already what it's done is it's colored all of the Januarys, the Marches, the Mays in a color. So let's just make this sort of a light orange color. Whoop, not the text, sorry. Keep the text black. We'll make the background sort of a light orange color. And then I'll hit done. And we'll keep those cells highlighted and I'll add another rule. And I'll go down to custom formula. And this time we're going to look to see whether it's even. So I'll type equals is even, open that up, month, open that up, D9, close, close, and let's give this sort of a light gray color. And you can see what it's done is it's colored all of the opposite cells. And this is just a neat visualization that I like to use when I'm putting these together so that I can see at a glance where my months start and end. And then finally, what I want is a dynamic um, title here that basically has our um, periodization and then automatically adjust to the year. So what this is going to look like, we're going to use some word logic. So I'll select my title bar here and I'm going to go up to my formula and I type equals. And when we're typing in words from a formula, anything we put in quotations will be printed out. So I'm going to type in quotation periodization and I'm going to spell it with a Z in this case space, um, double dots, space, and then quotation. So it's going to type out periodization, space, double dot, space. And then what I want, I'm going to type and year from the first cell. And when I close that off, what it's going to look like is periodization 2021. And I'll hit enter, and you can see that that gets put in there. I can make this a heck of a lot bigger and maybe bold and that looks pretty good to me. And now what I'll do 
is if I was to change this start date to say 2020, go all the way back, you can see that all of the dates automatically update and the periodization 2020 automatically updates. So that was just a quick start to this periodization project. In the next video, we'll start to tackle some of the formatting and then as well, we'll start to tackle the area where we'll put in our weeks and our games and our opponents. And over the next couple videos, we'll, complete, we'll create a complete annual planner. Like I mentioned in the intro, if you wanna just purchase this video, there will be a link down in the description below along with a discount code and you can purchase this and get to work putting your teams and plans into it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.